Hello sewing friends. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Casey and I'm the designer behind the indie sewing pattern company, Pattern Scout. If you watched my video last week, I made two garments out of a rectangle of fabric. So garments that you don't need a pattern for. And I love how those garments turned out. And today's project is actually one that I wanted to include in that video, but just kind of ran out of time for. And also that video got to be a little bit long. So I thought, why not do a bonus episode this week? This is technically my week off from posting on YouTube, but I thought I could do this project. It would be pretty quick. So this project is one that I've been wanting to make for a while. I wanted to make it before my recent trip to Spain, but I ran out of time. <laughs> And then again, ran out of time to make it last week. And I was inspired for this project by a tube top that I saw on anthropology.com. So I am on anthropology's website all the time. I love their stuff and I'm always finding garments on anthropology that I want to try to copy. The fabric that I'm going to use for this is a fabric that I've had in my stash for a really, really long time. So I bought this rayon crepe from Stone Mountain and Daughter Fabrics. I mean, it's probably been a couple of years ago now. I've been hanging on to it for a while. And part of the reason for that is when I bought it, I only bought like a yard and a half of it. And it's also a really narrow fabric. So I think it's probably, let's see, how wide is this fabric? It's really, really narrow, especially after I washed it. Yeah, it's like 36 inches wide. So it's a really narrow fabric. And I just didn't know what to make out of it. So when I saw this tube top on Anthropology, I thought this fabric would be perfect for that because it's not gonna require a lot of fabric. It's gonna be a really simple construction. And this has become a project that it's just, it's time. It is time to get it out of my head and onto my body. And anyway, let's just get started with the tutorial. Okay, so first off, I just need to kind of study this garment that I wanna copy. And the first thing that I notice is that the top here has this kind of folded over ruffle. And so I think because my fabric is the same on both the front and the back, I can do this without having to cut an extra piece for that top ruffle. So I'm just gonna create some extra length there that I can fold over the front and then sew a channel into for the elastic to go on the top. And it looks like this is about three or four inches from the top of that fold there. So I'll probably do about four and a half inches. That'll give me a little bit of extra for the seam allowance at the bottom of the ruffle here. And then I can just sew a channel up here about an inch away from that top fold. I'm going to take the sort of bodice length measurement that I took for my video last week, which was about 17 inches. And that included some extra length for trimming and making sure I got the fit just right, then I will add an inch to go up to the top of the fold, plus four and a half inches for the part that comes down on the front. I'll just do 17 inches plus five and a half inches, which is 22 and a half inches, I believe if my math is correct in my head, to create the total length for this bodice. And then that should give me enough for blousing and all that good stuff and seam allowance. And as far as the width goes, when I measured my full bust, my full bust was about 37 and a half inches. And a general rule for gathering is to give yourself one and a half times whatever the measurement is. 37.5 times 1.5 is 56.25 inches. And then if I divide that by two, so I'll have a front and a back, that is 28.125 inches. So I'm basically gonna have two pieces of fabric, one for the front, one for the back, that are 28 and 1 8 inch. I'll probably just do 28 inches to keep it simple. By, what did I say, 22 and a half inches long for each rectangle of fabric, and then I will do all of the gathering to give it some shape, okay? I've cut two pieces of fabric and I went ahead and pre-pressed hems in the top and in the bottom. So I've got a narrow hem pressed here along the top and that one is coming toward the right side of fabric. And then I've pressed a hem along the bottom. That one is going the opposite direction toward the wrong side of fabric. And that is because at the top, we're gonna have this piece that folds over for that top ruffle. And I went ahead and pressed a four inch fold along the top of this piece of fabric. And then our channel for the elastic will go here about an inch down from the top of that. This will be hemmed. And then that way that hem will be now facing, you know, underneath the ruffle. So I've done that for both pieces of fabric. Next, I put the front and the back bodice pieces 
wrong sides together because I'm going to do a French seam on either side seam. So I'll start with them wrong sides together. I've made sure too that when I put the two pieces together that I opened up the hem folds and the fold at the top because I want all of this to be sewn in one seam and then I'll fold everything over and finish the hems and then sew the channel in the top after I do the French seams on either side. finished the French seams on both sides. There you can see the French seam is on the interior and I've got it turned right side out and I've also hemmed both the top and the bottom of the blouse and I have turned this top ruffle to the right side and so now you can see that that hem is turned under on the right side. And one thing that I want to do is actually go in here where this French seam is exposed on the exterior because this will be on the this will be under the arm, but it'll be exposed. I'm just going to top stitch that down just on that portion of the ruffle. Like not, I'm not going to top stitch it to the actual bodice, but I'm just going to top stitch down the French seam there just so that it's not flopping open before I do the next step. Once I get that done, I'm actually going to go through and do a one inch stitch from this folded edge all the way around the perimeter of the top of the bodice. Then I'm going to go through and do another row of stitching underneath that first row that is a little more than a quarter inch away from the first row because that's going to create the channel for my quarter inch elastic and I need it to be just a little bit wider than the elastic and I'm going to leave a little bit open for that second row of stitching so that I can insert the elastic. I've got quarter inch elastic here and this is just a woven elastic and I just want to wrap this around my high bust so about where that channel is going to fall on my body and I'm doing this a little bit kind of snug, but not tight. And I'm looking in my mirror back here, like the very top of the bodice where the top ruffle is, I want it to fall about where this tank top is falling right now. And so I'm measuring about an inch down and I'm going all the way around like so. And I'm gonna leave myself just like a couple of inches extra just to play around with in case I feel like this is too tight and I'll just cut this to length. And then I'm gonna insert this with um, a safety pin into that channel that I just made on the top of the bodice. And this is what's going to gather the top of the bodice and keep it above my bust, basically. Okay, I've got the elastic inserted into the top of the tube top, and I think it needs to be just a little bit tighter. I mean, it, it, it's okay, but in the back it's kind of drooping down quite a bit. So I think I'm going to tighten it just a little bit more, and then I think it'll be good.
Okay, so the last thing that I want to do is add some shearing to the waistline of this top to give it that kind of peplum style. And to do that, I'm just going to be using some elastic thread. This is just, you can pick this up at Joanne. That's where I got this. You can order it online at wildlack.com. And it's just a very basic shearing thread. And what you do is you take this and you wind it onto your bobbin. And I'm just going to kind of stick it through the little hole here at the top. Pull it out enough just so that I can hang on to it. And then I'm just going to kind of hold it with my thumb and start wrapping the thread around the bobbin. I've seen some people say that you should wrap this extra tight. I've seen some people say you, could, you should wrap it extra loose. I like to go somewhere in the middle, kind of like Goldilocks. I like to get it just right. So I'm not applying too much tension, but I'm wrapping it enough so that it's not just like flying off of the bobbin. And then I'm also not wrapping it so tight that the tension creates a sort of spring action so that it flies off the bobbin also. And I'm just going to wrap, oops, there goes my thread roll. I'm just going to continue wrapping this until I get it uh, probably about halfway full. I don't want it to go all the way to the edge of the bobbin case because I don't want it to be too fat to fit into the bobbin case. And I'm kind of flipping it over every so often so that I can kind of get it evenly wrapped. And then that's probably good enough because I'm, I'm not really doing, I'm only doing I think two or three rows of shearing on this. And then I'm just going to trim off this excess here and then I will put that in my bobbin case. I'll give myself a little extra length there. And then, um, oh, another thing you want to do too is on your bobbin case, there is this little screw right here, this one, the bigger one. If I turn that, I usually turn it to loosen it to the left, lefty loosey, righty tighty. I'll turn it just about a quarter of a turn. That'll loosen the tension on the bobbin case a little bit so that you don't have too much tension on that thread and you can get it actually through the sewing machine. And um, I don't usually mess around with the tension on the top thread too much. Um, I haven't had any issues with that so far but I'll put the bobbin into the bobbin case with the elastic thread on it. I'll kind of pull it through the sewing machine as I would normally. And then I'll test the stitching on a scrap piece of fabric before I start stitching on my garment. I also decided where I wanted to put the shearing for the waistline and I decided about four inches up from the hem would be just about right. So that is where I'm going to put the shearing. I'll measure with a tape measure, mark it with pins, and then I will sew the shearing around, you know, at that location. And then I'll do the second and possibly third row of shearing about, um, probably about three eighths of an inch apart. I've heard different kind of advice on this, but I do a little back stitch to lock the stitching at the side seam. Some people say that you shouldn't back stitch with the elastic thread. I haven't had any issues with it, so I always back stitch and plus I'm just kind of lazy and I don't feel like stopping and tying a knot in it. And then I'll move over to the next row and do the same thing. So the second row. I'm gonna start with two rows of shearing. I'm gonna try on the bodice, see what I think about it. And then if I need to add another one, I'll add another one or two. I don't know, we'll see how I feel about it. But I think in the inspiration image, there were three rows of shearing at the waistline. 